Um, many of you have heard, heard repeated in the media, just, just talking to people, that the national news media has a liberal bias. And long for sure, I'm here to tell you that that is a myth. Now that's uh, excuse me, Isaac. I need cell phones put away. I want I want to see a cell phone. I'm watching three people text. Now this is just rude, immature. If I see another text sent, I will take the cell phone. All right, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'll start taking the top here. Many of you have heard of the media, just from talking to people, that the that the mainstream media, the national news media, has a liberal bias. And I'm going to tell you that that is a myth. And um, to to begin with, I will uh, we'll discuss for a moment where where this myth comes from, where uh, where many observers believe it originated. With this guy, Richard Milhouse Nixon, his administration in general had a habit of complaining about the media's negativity toward his administration, negativity toward the Vietnam War. But more than anything else, it was his vice president, Spiro Agnew, who, um, who was largely responsible for that. He uh, described the media as a group of nattering nabobs of negativity. I don't know what a nabob is, but I'm fairly certain it's not a kind term. <laughs> and that, but that's where many people believe it started. It has a persisted over the decades to this day, however, and uh, one of the most recent uh, politicians who have come out and made this claim is, uh, is this gent right here, vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan. Uh, some, some of his workout photos, I thought, thought we all enjoy that. He's <laughs> a real picture, this is not Photoshop, this was, I believe, I believe it was for a Time magazine shoot never actually ran, but someone got all the photos anyway. And during during the campaign, he was uh, he, he was talking to to, uh, to Fox News, I believe, and he said and he said straight up, I believe that Romney and I will have to deal with liberal bias in this uh, in this upcoming election. Now, um, let's we've discussed where it comes where it comes from. Now let's discuss a few reasons why why it was. <coughs> there have been multiple studies done over the years that have proven a, a number of things that detract from this point. The, uh, the first is that journalists as a profession tend toward mid the middle of the road politically, whereas they, they, they actually tend more conservative than general populace on economic issues, whereas they tend more liberal than general populace on social issues, which I, which I suppose that makes a lot of sense as well balance. And there, there's that, and there's the fact that there have been many studies done that outlets said you wouldn't think this, this, just this past election, that the 2012 election, just to get real contemporary, on the NPR that you know the National Public Radio and Alladu's congressional Republicans have been working on defunding for years. NPR gave Romney Romney quotes more airtime than Obama quotes. They gave Romney a bigger megaphone. Now, that, that could be attributed to a number of things. Possibly that because he's he, he's not the incumbent, they want to help the listener get to know the the new candidate better. But the fact remains that Romney got more airtime. And but here. Here's the big thing. So this this chart just came out just a few weeks ago from the Fourth Estate Foundation. From the Fourth Estate Foundation. Now, what what Fourth Estate does is they do these these studies of of the media and um, the way media affects our political process, and they put them into handy little infographics like this. And how legible is this? Can, can we can, can we get a general idea of what this chart is showing? I tried to fit as much of it as I could on on the slide. Um, if you see here, we, we see a number of uh, large national media outlets. We see this is, you can't read this in all this, this is Fox News, this is CBS News, The Washington Post, USA Today, MSNBC, NPR, CNN, and The New York Times. Now, what these pie charts show is the percentage of negative coverage that a given candidate has received from the media. With the, with the blue, the blue pie, representing negative coverage for President Obama, and the red pie representing negative coverage for Kevin Romney. And we, we see here, Fox News, not surprising. Everyone knows where they stand. And we look down here, MSNBC, again, not surprising. Everyone knows where they stand. So based on those two, we okay, this chart doesn't tell us anything, but look at the rest of them. We see CBS, Washington Post, USA Today, New York Times, CNN, and NPR, all, I'm sorry, with the exception of the R, the slight exception, all gave 
President Obama a higher percentage of negative coverage than Joe Romney. We have 63 percent with CBS. We have almost 62 percent with Washington Post. 59 percent with USA Today, and um, 57 percent with the Times. Now, with the exception of um, the exception of Fox News, all of these outlets here are regularly described by by their competitors, by politicians who don't like what they have to say as liberal. But the numbers don't bear that out. And we see, from just, like, we can argue back and forth about, you know, what, what counts as liberal coverage, what counts as conservative coverage. But you see this, and what it comes down to, as, as so many things do, is math. To review, the the myth of the liberal media goes back to at least as far as the 60s, and it is continuous to this day. And as we can see from these charts, it is not borne out. And again, to review that journalists as a profession tend toward the middle of the road, despite the fact that many people in the public no longer trust them. Thank you for your time, and have a nice day.